Professor Dr. Asaf Savash graduated from Galatasaray University and Istanbul University Faculty of Economics and he had some master degrees in university from UK and he has some articles in many big newspapers and he attended in many conferences and gave conferences in local and international level in NTV, a television network. He participated as a speaker in Echo Dialogue program and he still is a columnist in Vatan newspaper. Yes, the floor is yours, sir. Well, good morning. And I would like to thank Mr. Murat and Steel Orbis. And this steel work is the backbone of the industrial um, sector. And this is highly beneficial. I've come here and listened to all the presentations and speeches. This is highly beneficial session, and we've learned a lot of things, a lot of beneficial information. Right now, I'm going to give you non-beneficial, unbeneficial information. I'm not going to. I was going telling to myself I wasn't going to explain the balloon story, but it's it, maybe some of you know of it. I don't know if there are many of you or some of you who don't know or not. There were two people who got lost and the balloon got lost and they bumped into a person, a man, and the balloon got over him and the man was shouting, where are we? And the man in the, on the floor, on, on the ground said that you are on the ground and the other one was saying the same thing. The other friend, the other man woke up suddenly, came to himself and asked whether he is doing a caddling. And he said, you're saying all of the things, all of the giving all the information that is unnecessary for me. You can, as an, a good economist, I mean, a good economist describes the fact describe something makes a forecast but if it's not realized you have to give a good reason for the fact that why it's not realized so i'm going to prove this to you our problem our issue is regarding the turkish economy where turkish economy stands i have meddled in i have put you in this we'll see where we will be where is turkey where is turkey going you ha all have your feelings about it. First of all, we had a great impact during the economic crisis, but then we had, uh, we have recovered greatly. We have improved greatly, and towards and afterwards, as of 12-11, after the crisis, we have tackled. We have, we were in search for. And new measurements in order to tackle these problems. And we have to understand where we are, what is going on. We have to see the changes in the conjunctions, how it's being changed, and so forth. Of course, you have to make a good prediction, good forecast. And then you have to say, I said so, I told you so. You have to be optimistic, completely optimistic. If things go well, you be optimistic. If, it's, if things go bad, you have to be precautious. So you have to be on both sides. So there are a few overviews we, that we have to, ob observations that we have to explain. Turkey is neither successful nor unsuccessful when you look at the history of industrialization in Turkey. For example, Korea is a success story. You don't, we don't have to tell it. There is also Argentina on the other hand. It was a hundred years ago, it had the same income as Canada, and now we've caught up with it. As a person, as an employment income, we, we are over Argentina now. We are in, ahead of Argentina. And second feature of this is 
that there is when Turkey enters into a new road, a new stage. This is the same thing with the company too. When you enter into a business, you become successful, but this is a temporary condition. After five years of period of time, you have to go to a second there is stage, second stage. But Turkey has difficulties entering into such a state stage, and um, get. So, as you can all imagine or think, uh, we always end up with a crisis. For example, we had import uh, between 1950s and 1980s, we had import substitution, but we were, uh, we ended up with a crisis because of closure economy, closed economy. And you sometimes, for example, we ended up, for example, with a crisis. This was a clo complete closure economy. And during that time, Turkish, econ Turkish industry was established. And in the 19, you had, they had to uh, end this closed economy in 1960s, but they continued for 20 more years. In 1980s, they, have out, they had an outward-looking economy, and with that, there were some certain financial instabilities, such as uh, current deficit uh, and also inflation, which was 80% an annual inflation at that period was 80% for 10 years, for a decade, and it's like for 6% each year. And it's even Japanese cannot make, were not able to make that in the long term. When we come to the 20s, when we come to the millennium, we were and we ended up in a country with an inflation. And this was as a result of 1994, 1999, 2001 crisis, economic crisis. There were some in incentive, as an incentive factor, you have to have a stick. You have to take a stick with an economy in order to get rid of the crisis. And during the millennium time, we were quite successful in terms of outward looking economy. We have to admit that. And between 2000 and 2010, there was some certain instability. We have to admit that, too. But still, they were outward looking. There was also another crisis out of the hands of Turkey, which was 2008, which was which, and the other crisis, for example, the other crises were brought up by Turkey. It was made in Turkey, but not in 2008. We were outward looking, we had an instability, we are a member of customs union, we have our industry and so on. But besides that, we have a great deficit. So for the decades, without any crisis, uh, we have we could have handled the situation just like we handled in 1994. We had again a current deficit, but in while it was in uh, in January 1994, it was 13 point five, 13,500, and then it it went up to 40,000, which increased by 30 percent. But we have come to a stage with a sustainable uh, growth. So I will proceed with another slide right now. There has to be a graphic in every slide, in my opinion. We have to f uh, adapt to the standards of this uh, job. So with this growth, with the growth prongs, we have trends. Trends, growth, inclination between 1999 and 2014. As of instability period, which is as of millennium, there was another crisis in 2001, of course. But the growth in the beginning started to increase. And afterwards, the growth rate uh, sharply decreases. It slowly decreases, in fact. But when did this happen? When did this take place? You, as you can see in 2012. This is as a result of a search, and then this result in a search for solving the problem in current account. And we have to solve these issues amongst ourselves. And this is the period, the date, where we start searching for new ways. And the type of the growth can be seen like, can, be, can be seem easy, but we have inner uh, domestic 
we have domestic demand in here with the pink color you can see and then with the blue one we or we should call it purple maybe but with the, the other color you see where the uh, ex import is and that is the foreign uh, demand as you can see domestic demand is higher but the import is pulling the number down the graphic down and as you can see we have exaggerated in terms of domestic demand and this ends in great current deficit the other periods also attract our attention this is what we call growth both the domestic demand and the foreign demand have declined but it is balanced but the growth has declined as well so it's lowered down to 3% in between the years 12 11 and 12 14 as you can see the growth decreases too but beforehand in the past we used we could have uh, grow we could have ha we had the growth rate rate of 8% but then we had the current accounts too but now we have a balanced but slow growth this is the pre uh, preparatory stage the this is a very important issue, which is the real, uh, the, which is the interest. As you can see in the central bank, uh, the administration rates are also important. So this is a really real uh, interest period, as you can see in the graphics. Which is which goes up to 17 percent, 18 percent during the time of Yilmaz. There is a small decline, for example, from 14 to 8 to 12 percent, which is real interest, and the global crisis solved this problem. In the second stage, in the second period, where Yilmaz was Mesut Yilmaz was serving. Yilmaz were serving. This was a time of a search, a peer search period, and you were look. They were looking for new ways, and this was a balancing. This was negative period, and in the beginning of 1214, the interest increases again, as you can see. What I want to say is this: the interest decreases, but it won't. Get, it won't increase from now on, but it's not going to decrease either. Just like Bashji's first period, it's going to either go up or go down, but around it's the number, the rate is going to be approximately like this. And the exchange rate, just like central bank calculates, as you can see in the graphic, the blue. The, the red one is the inclination, the trend, and the green one is the average. And as of 2004, there is a great gain of uh, gain and valuation of Turkish lira, of TL. And afterwards, you see also high real interest. This is as a result of it. But as you can see, a Turkish lira uh, see, goes through a depreciation. When you look at uh, the trend, Turkish lira is a little bit above the trend. This is very important in terms of the parity and exchange ratio forecasts. So what did we do as Echo Dialogue, the television program team? Uh, we published them each year. Uh, my friend said that I am a still columnist in Vatan newspaper. Thank you very much, but I'm not working there. 2012-2014. What does that mean? What did we say as of 1st of January 2012? 2013, 2014. In 2012, there was a bright way, and we expected 
growth by 4%, 5%, and the mean value is 4.5%, and the realization is 22 If you cannot forecast the growth, that doesn't mean anything if you forecast the others. Yes, we have forecasted the shrinkage, but we could not see the real value. And uh, one of our friends said for the parities, for the ratios, some said was 5%, 2%. Um, and I'm very famous with the dollar ratio, exchange ratio. I'm always wrong. I'm always wrong at my forecasts. And in 2013, we are very successful, actually. So the growth forecast was 3.9, and the growth was 4, and then it was revised up to 4.1. But I didn't place it. I always look at what it was said in the first place. We were very successful, and the rest of the growth was OK. If you hit the growth rate, the others will come. And you can see the rate of the exchange dollar rate. Everybody said 1.8, 1.85, and one of our friends who is me, uh, said two, and the realization was 2.08. Uh, we cannot say that economies are affected in the same way due to the crisis, but the crisis are really beneficial things for the economists, because during the crisis, economists are appreciated a lot. Eco dialogue. Normally, not everybody is watching them because it was broadcasted at the very early time of the evening, and we were actually chatting among ourselves. Not a, chatting among ourselves. It was not an official program, but then everybody started to watch us. And then, what happened? The second crisis came after that. In, in 2000. And one uh, in May. Um, the, the soap operas were behind us. We were the winner of the rating competition. During the advertisements, during the commercial times, we were drinking our drinks. So the time of the Turkish alcohol like drink changes. Yes, everybody is in the same opinion. How uh, could you stop the um, uh, broadcast of the program. Whatever they say, we were doing the opposite. So what are we going to do? Everybody was complaining. But I want to say this. I make a forecast. But whether it is going to be the righteous way or the wrongful way, I don't know. It's just a forecast. Sometimes it becomes real. Sometimes it becomes unreal. You have to predict that. You cannot just I rely on me. The ones who relied on me and buy uh, dollars in the year of 2011, they're in troublesome. But the ones who did not rely on me, they are OK, of course. So it depends on you. When it comes to 2014, we can see our forecast is very realistic. There was a recession on the growth. It was forecasted. And the current deficit becomes higher based on our forecast and inflation. There are Many arguments, some say inflation would decrease, some say it would increase, and um, I believe it would go down in the dollar exchange ratio. Our forecasts are between 230, 215, and this is the range. So when it comes to my 1st of January 2014 forecast and November forecast, yes, there are some differences, but as a result, the forecast has become 2.5%, and right now it has become 2.9%. In the beginning of December uh, last year, everything was very troublesome. Not everybody is aware of the situation, because um, in the upcoming year, there would be elections of the uh, presidency, and everything uh, was concerning. Um, but when you look at our forecasts, they are very 
well seen that they are okay. And in Turkish lira, uh, we are uh, again in the very much appreciated levels. So what is the problem of our country? Uh, so there is the current deficit, which is not dependent on public. There are problems coming from the private sector. The balance sheet of the private sector creates the problems. This is very similar to Spain. This is not a Greece. We need to say this. In 2012, there was um, seeking for slowing down effect. But how we can change the situation? 5% is stated as the current deficit ratio. But is it sustainable? What is the equivalent ratio? The central bank had a ratio on their minds, and it is about to be changed right now. They are going to decrease it down. And the golden commerce with Iran has changed the data, and it has changed the overall situation. So as a result, there is the price of this correction. The price says that there is a decrease in the overall economy. This is not just uh, the situation of no pain, yes gain. Yes, there should be gain after this pain. We have to correct us. And European Union, Germany, they say that uh, we should open our market. Turkish come and export to us, but no, life does not always give what you want. I prefer the overshooting. I prefer going uh, slower than the government. Some way or another, the ones who produce for the internal market should be tightened. There should be an austerity policy, but it should be very slow and very soft. Nobody should feel it, but somehow you have to apply the austerity. And there was the balloon argument. Is it the situation or not? Is this the reality or not? Will it come or not? This is a big question mark on our minds. But the most important thing that I have stressed, and for now we are successful, I have to accept that, we should not come to halt for the growth, because this market economy is something very nice. If it grows, it continues to grow, because when there is growth, consumers' motivation is higher, and they consume more. When they consume more, uh, the companies make more investments. So the better the investment, the higher the national revenues, national income, and it increases the prosperity, welfare, and you can see the inverse situation, the opposite situation in Greece, in Spain, in Italy. If there is no growth, there is demotivation on consumers. Consumers do not consume, therefore, there is no increase on the sales. and. Companies do not produce, and there is no growth. So this is a vicious cycle like that. So under the circumstances, demotivation still persists, and no one consumes, and this is the vicious circle. We have to prevent this. We have to think this prevention. But uh, what did they choose? They said that we have to decrease the interests and increase the rate of exchange. Yes, it can go higher, but it should not be at the very top level because there is a very big um, emptiness of the exchanges and there is a very weird balance situation and it prevents the growth, unfortunately. When it comes to debt ratios, this is very much important. If there is the financial stability of our country, behind this you can see uh, the restructuring of the public finance. This definition is beyond the definition of European Union. This definition is used by IMF and Europe, um, United States. This is the government debt. 
and this is below 30 percent. It continues to drop as of the crisis. This is due to the strict financial policies. The comparison is very important. With the same definition, United States federal government debt is 90 percent. Turkey's debt ratio is 28 percent, and United States 90 percent, and Germany 88 percent, and Japan it is 150 percent. Italy and Spain, I don't want to give the details of them. In Europe, with this definition, we have the lowest debt ratio. We are the largest country in Europe. We should not count Norway or the others because they don't have that and they have more assets compared to their national income. But we have to be realistic. Turkey's biggest advantage, biggest strength comes from public finance and public debts. We have to bear this on our minds. We have to take this into consideration. When it comes to current deficit, it has many surprises. It is full of surprises. It decreases the global economy. And then you can see there is a booming, and then there is a recovery, and there is the soft landing. And then what happens? There is a big decreasing, and then there is a big increasing. This is due to the golden commerce with Iran. Uh, we imported golden from Iran, and then we have to balance the current deficit. We sold this gold to Iran, but uh, nothing has changed. Excluding Golden, our current deficit is on this graph. This graph is very much obvious, actually. Two years ago, 2011, in September, October, November, in the autumn period, our debt, our current deficit annually, our current deficit was $73 billion. This is the peak in Turkish Republic history. Right now it is $42 billion. The October numbers were published. It would go down $41 billion, but excluding golden. And I believe 2% uh, will show itself within the upcoming month. And as you can see here, this once um, the blue ones are the energy importation. Compared to 2012, our bill has increased up to 53 billion, but right now we are about 50 billion dollars and we have the stability. If we add this, in the past it was also increasing, but it was almost 35 billion dollars. So this recovery has been realized by Turkey within the last three years. I'm not sure whether you are satisfied or not. I don't know if you are satisfied, but there's the correction, there's a recovery. It is sufficient or not. This is something else that is need to be discussed. And this is, as you can see here, uh, the accumulated number, net mistake missing. This is the accumulated net mistake incomplete. I need to apologize. And after crisis, there was a money forgiveness and the exchange were delivered, but we couldn't include them. How can you include them? You cannot include them for the importation, exportation, tourism incomes. And this is the net mistake incomplete. And uh, the second comes with the second wave, comes with the soft lending and the golden commerce, and it creates more complexity. Each wave shows $10 billion. I don't know why each wave shows $10 billion. So in 2012, it is $20 billion. But then there is much more billion dollars. Within three years, not three years, but five years, there is $30 billion. Each year, it means $6 billion. Yes, there is $30 billion, but we cannot include them at our accounts. Yes, we have that money, but we cannot include them for the profits or the losses. This is an item that we can include at anywhere. We don't know where it came from. We don't know anything about it. When we include all of this, current deficit actually shrinks a little bit more. It is not a big amount, but there is a shrinkage. It's 
makes attribution contributions for the current deficit. Yes, after this recovery and correction period, economy was very hard in terms of the outside conditions. I don't need to say all of this to you because you all know there was a crisis in Europe and other places from the crude raw material uh, prices. Turkey was not a very satisfied place, uh, was not a very appreciated place, but in spite of this, we had this peak and due to the petroleum prices decrease, we can see there is going to be a positive situation. There are some structural organizational problems. We like to talk about some structural organizational problems. We actually do not like continental policy. Therefore, we are in favor of talking much more about the structural organizational problems. There is the big competition. Global champions are not raised among our country employees. Uh, yes, we have this lacking from the global champion and there are many serious problems due to the quality of the education there are political risks these are obvious everybody knows that there are a lot of political risks but in spite of all of these problems there are strengths in this structure and these are known things i don't want to repeat myself i don't want to repeat what you already know uh, the young population the economy size economy scale uh, population of the economy is not population uh, is not actually very well adequate for economies to be stronger but it is effective we have to state that when you look at the customs union we are also a member of this this is a very good pillar and economy policy this is something which is very supportive so um, what to do in this uh, circumstances we should not be afraid of many things financial policies are emotional they can get affected easily Let's say in Christmas there is going to be an assault in Turkish lira and dollar would be 2.5 and some can say in April dollar would be 2.2 and in October it would be 2.4 in December it would be 2.1 again but you should not take them very seriously there is low possibility of hard lending I said the same thing in the beginning of this year and it came to be true A Turkish Republic's problem is not basically the termination. This is the exchange ratios. We are in favor of exchange ratios. Uh, mean, average, citizen, no the parity. When you look, go to Germany, if you ask Germans about the parity, Euro, this is their own money, they don't know the Euro parity. And when you go to the United States, 80% of them don't know the parity, and 90% of them don't know the other countries use different monies. But in Turkey, everybody knows dollar, euro. If you ask even an ordinary citizen, they can tell you about dollar, euro parity. So you know how it goes on. Uh, from now on, it would not go down very sharply, and it would not go up. There is a limitation for its becoming higher, and there is not a place to go down. There is a very dangerous but it is not the growth itself. Slow growth is trickle down. This is called as trickle down. And in the latest period of times, there is an indication for this. We should not take inflation into consideration very seriously. The blue one shows central banks inflation forecast. So the first period for 2016 December, Central bank said that it would below 6%, but it came up below, above 9%. So an institution should be controlling the inflation, but the forecast is not 
the way that they can foresee. And we can understand it neither goes down or nor up. We should not be afraid of inflation. From time to time it goes up, from time to time it goes down, and even the central bank cannot forecast us. I always look at the rental, leasing prices. There is a slight increase, and also we have to be looking at the hairdressers' prices. And I'm also a follower of manicure and pedicure prices because these are affected by the economies. The items are really affected, and the investment capitals are very low actually for manicure there is one bag and two plastic boxes when you look at this situation hairdressers have aggravated their prices in the recent periods there's something interesting when the exchange ratio is increasing hairdressers do not make price increases. When the opposite becomes real, hairdressers always increases their prices. And very recently, there is something very concerning about the central bank. It is about precaution. Yes, world economy, it was also wanted from me, and I want to show this to you. This year, there is not much growth, and all the countries that you are interested in, there is not a big growth, and you can see growth expectations of Turkey. Some use IMF, some use OECD. This was delivered to me yesterday. I made this analysis yesterday, Citibank. I work with them because they have a very good team. They carry this service out twice a year. I'm waiting for December's edition. In Iran economy, there is not a big movement, acceleration. And as you can see, in Turkey's economy, there is not a much changing situation. What happens after this? What would happen? in the global level. There was a crisis, and the crisis took very long time, and the forecasts of the balance sheet take very long time, and it is very hard, actually, to put a very clear forecast. There are some sur surpluses. Surpluses are resulted because of some countries who make excessive supplies. There will be a recession and a slowdown on growth. Uh, this is going to happen. Yes, there is going to be a recession on the growth. And so we can say we are not in a very bright situation in world economy. Raw material prices. Going to the raw material prices and thinking of the crisis, this crisis is different than the other any other uh, crises. Because when you experience a world crisis, the raw materials go through a deflation, which is the reverse version of inflation. But this didn't take place in this very crisis. There are those structuralists who say that th there are some certain people who became rich and so on. And this increase is permanent. This increase of price is permanent. This is conjectural, and this is as a result of the dynamics in China. And they were, when we, when you look at it graphically, at the graphics, this is real. This is the American Consumer Price Index, and. As you can see, for out of 100%, there are great increases. But even during the time of crisis, you don't see any deflations, not even real deflations. So there is another boom again. And then they, there is a normal stage. And what is this? This is around 100. 
Is there any kind of a decreasing potential? Yes, there is around 40 percent, 50 percent, uh, which is in the index. But what you, I mean, your concern is the pink ones, the pink ones in the graphic, which is the metals. So Tur I'm coming to an end. Turkish uh, predictions. As you can guess, that we don't have an extreme prediction. We have a 1.4 percent of growth. Of course, the inflation will go down, and the exchange rate may go up and down. Around three, I said 2.50 percent. Maybe the incre uh, unemployment might increase. This is not a surprising scenario. So. The risks are not downward, it's upward, so it can make a better performance. Of course, I don't expect it to have a bad importance. I kept you so long and I've been a, I ran, ran a bit late, but I hope that you didn't get bored. We now have lunch time. Thank you very much.